ULA is now at rock bottom. United Launch Alliance ULA, used to be the U.S. military's preferred rocket launcher. To achieve that, can't help but mention the contributions of thousands of strong workforce across the company's sites. Ironically, in recent years, we have witnessed the escape of top genius engineers who have built an empire ULA to join Elon Musk's SpaceX. So why did they leave their home? Is this the end for defense contractors? How did ULA CEO Tori Bruno react to that? Find out everything in today's TechMap episode. But before we begin, let's subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest space news. United Launch Alliance ULA, a joint venture between private space companies Lockheed Martin and Boeing, has established itself as a significant player in the aerospace industry since its formation in 2006. It provides launch vehicles to NASA, the Department of Defense, and other organizations. Headquartered in Denver, Colorado, ULA's rockets are among the largest and most powerful in the industry. The company has achieved over 155 successful launches to date with a 100% success rate for its launches since its inception. This includes a mix of missions for NASA, the Department of Defense, and commercial customers. Thanks to that, the defense contractor has become one of the most reliable launch service providers in the world. The reliability has made ULA the go-to choice for critical national security and scientific missions. However, the glory and monopoly position of the leading U.S. satellite launch service provider is gradually fading. The emergence of young private launch companies with innovations changed everything. Can't help but mention SpaceX, funded by billionaire Elon Musk, which has eaten the lunch of the legacy companies, capturing 40% of Pentagon contracts over the last few years. ULA is now at the rock bottom. According to a source, Boeing and Lockheed Martin are in talks to sell ULA to Sierra Space, a young private space company. It's surprising because there were previous rumors that Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin would buy the defense contractor. And it is also bitter that a once famous defense contractor, Boeing's Cash Cow, was sold at a bargain price. Some even say that ULA is worth zero dollars now. At ULA, financial challenges are mounting as budgets exceed expectations, while revenue declines due to customer delays that are pushing back launch schedules. Additionally, competition from SpaceX has cost the company its monopoly on important Pentagon projects. The key here is in the type of rocket that SpaceX has been chasing from the start, the reusable rocket that ULA has only switched to in recent years. The development and proliferation of reusable rockets have contributed greatly to reducing the cost of each rocket launch and saving tax dollars for the government. While ULA's sole reusable rocket, Vulcan Centaur, is in the testing phase, SpaceX has set a record with more than 300 launches and landings of its Falcon 9 family. The increasing financial pressure has prompted Boeing and Lockheed Martin, the parent companies of ULA, to consider divesting their stake in the company seeking to offload it to another entity, losing staff. Of course, once ULA is no longer the leader in space, it is inevitable that it will gradually lose genius personnel to competitors like SpaceX or Blue Origin. According to recent reports of BNN Bloomberg, ULA has lost about 45 employees from its 105 launch operation staff this year alone, the people who test, assemble, and prepare every rocket and its cargo to fly at its primary launch site in Florida. The implication of staff loss is significant. The loss of key personnel can hinder ULA's operational capabilities and slow down the development and launch processes of its rockets. This could impact the company's ability to fulfill existing contracts and compete effectively for future missions. Take for example, leading up to a recent Pentagon mission on July 30th, ULA required more personnel to address these quality issues, prompting the company to fly in a temporary crew from 500 miles away to Cape Canaveral, Florida. This reliance on external workers indicates a strain on ULA's existing workforce and resources, not to mention the need for temporary crews to handle unexpected repairs has led to increased labor costs. This situation reflects a broader issue of inadequate staffing and planning, which has resulted in additional expenses. Or in the Vulcan instance, ULA sent a handful of experienced technicians to replace leaking actuators. It's not uncommon for the company to travel experienced personnel between sites, with the goal of achieving a record number of launches next year, the lack of experienced personnel will make the situation worse. 
Beyond that, as experienced engineers and staff leave ULA, the company may struggle to maintain its competitive edge in the market. The aerospace industry relies heavily on specialized knowledge and expertise, and losing talent to competitors can create long-term challenges. It can be said that ULA's bad outcome was long anticipated. In March 2016, Brett Toby, Vice President of Engineering at ULA, told a group of students at the University of Colorado Boulder that the company can't compete with newcomer SpaceX on price. According to him, ULA's corporate structure isn't well adapted to survive in the so-called new space economy. Elon Musk and SpaceX have changed the game, he continued, and it's not immediately clear how ULA could cut costs enough to compete. He also suggested it wouldn't hurt the legacy space launch giant to capture some of SpaceX's cool. After the comment he made at the University of Colorado Boulder, Brett Toby has resigned. ULA CEO Tori Bruno then stated, The views, positions, and inaccurate statements Mr. Toby presented at his recent speaking engagement were not aligned with the direction of the company My Views, nor the views I expect from ULA leaders. He added, Mr. Toby's resigned his position at ULA effective immediately, now that things at ULA are going as Toby predicted. When it comes to recent reports reflecting ULA's current status, State, Tori Bruno responded that, I did that with the journalist and am um, quoted. He also shared the graph of ULA launches per year, showing the company's determination to ramp up to way more than the present. There will be 20 rocket launches next year, including 14 commercial and six government launches. He said, next year's launches are under contract. The payloads are being built, and many of the rockets to fly them are already fabricated. Last year, SpaceX did 96 launches, and ULA just did three. But for Tori, this is not a big deal. My compliments to their impressive launch rate, achieved in less than the 10 years since I've been watching. I recall when three was a good year. Because we are not a spacecraft maker, all our launches need to be revenue-bearing and will not have this very high internal demand. He's also not worried about a shortage of engineers for his ambitious projects. We typically have several hundred applicants for each position, and more than a few coming to us from the other direction, or sometimes just returning home. It's encouraging to see Tory's determination to revive ULA. There's no doubt that today's dynamic and competitive marketplace will push slower organizations to move faster than ever. The bottom line here is that EULA has settled down in its comfort zone for a long time to be the workhorse launch provider for the U.S. military. But the newer launch entrants like SpaceX dream more than that. Going to Mars, setting up a contemporary city there, and even traveling interplanetary. Such lofty aspirations drive the company to develop reusable rockets, improving them day by day and reaching limits that no one has ever achieved before. Imagine what if ULA did not face potential risks from competitors. Will they continue to rely on the Russian rocket engine and expandable hardware? ULA had that monopoly for 10 years, and even though the importance of reusability was obvious, they chose to continue using a disposable rocket design. As a result, over those 10 years, we spent tons of tax dollars on expensive vehicles, costing hundreds of dollars per launch. This is such a huge waste, whereas we always have the alternative option, which is much more effective in cost and functions. In fact, no one had dared to be the game changer until SpaceX was founded. SpaceX has actually brought competition to a stagnant industry and forced its only competitor to innovate. To regain market share from the Falcon 9, ULA has developed a new generation rocket, Vulcan Centaur, with reusability that they have never done before, and this could significantly reduce the cost per launch. This is clearly a good sign for the Pentagon as they always have two suppliers for redundancy, and by making the fair competitive market, they have managed to bargain with its favorite contractor over a good deal, not only save the taxpayer tons of money, but Elon Musk also tidies the mess made by incompetent contractors. In August, NASA used a SpaceX rocket to deliver food and extra clothing to the space station for the astronauts. Butch and Suni, who are being stranded on the ISS due to technical glitches on their Boeing Starliner spacecraft. With problems worsening aboard the Starliner, NASA is considering the possibility of ordering a rescue mission on Dragon that would take place in February 2025. In June, when United Launch Alliance decided to skip its customer, Sierra Space, to launch its Vulcan Centaur rocket earlier, many people expressed their concern. 
They analyze that with Vulcan's current schedule, it will be a long time before Sierra's Dream Chaser spacecraft can make its first flight on the new Vulcan rocket. As a result, the delayed spacecraft will be further delayed. At that time, both companies said that they would discuss with each other going into the final solution. And while the public is waiting for the consensus, Sierra Space has taken a very cool action, given that instead of relying on your supplier, buy it. Yes, Boeing and Lockheed Martin, the two companies that founded ULA, are currently in negotiations to sell their rocket-launching joint venture to Sierra Space. A deal could value ULA at around $2 billion to $3 billion. A deal to sell ULA, a major provider of launch services to the U.S. government, and a top rival to Elon Musk's SpaceX, would mark a significant shift in the U.S. space launch industry as ULA separates from two of the largest defense contractors to a smaller, privately held firm. The potential sale comes after years of speculation about ULA's future and failed attempts to divest the joint venture over the past decade. In 2019, Boeing and Lockheed Martin reportedly explored selling ULA but couldn't agree on terms with potential buyers. Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin and Cerberus Capital Management had placed bids in early 2023 for the company. Rocket Lab had also expressed interest. None of those discussions led to a deal. Rocket Lab could not be immediately reached. Talking about the deal with Sierra, many people said that they don't have this on their bingo card because Sierra is deemed a tiny company and ULA is now out of date. So where is Sierra getting the money from? Perhaps the company can court outside investors. Also, they can file for a huge business acquisition loan. Then they could buy the company in full and pay it off over time. Additionally, they are a subsidiary of Sierra Nevada Corporation, which was founded in 1963 and had 2.4 billion USD in revenue in 2021. Possibility, Sierra was funded for this acquisition. So this leads to one more question. What will Sierra get back for this two or three billion dollar investment? The most notable benefit is they will get a rocket, the next generation Vulcan Centaur rocket, without spending time, effort, and money to build a new one. This offers the flexibility to conduct any Dream Chaser launch. They won't have to spend $110 million per launch because of leasing from ULA. Gaining full control over the rocket allows them to operate more cost-effectively. More than cost, what a new entrant can get from giants like ULA are old space and lobbying capability. United Launch Alliance has established itself as a significant player in the aerospace industry since its formation in 2006. It provides launch vehicles to NASA, the Department of Defense, and other organizations. ULA's rockets are among the largest and most powerful in the industry. The company has achieved over 155 successful launches to date with a 100% success rate for its launches since its inception. Thanks to that, the defense contractor has become one of the most reliable launch service providers in the world. The reliability has made ULA the go-to choice for critical national security and scientific missions. With rumors of Blue Origin also planning to purchase ULA, some suspect Jeff Bezos was never going to buy it. According to them, there is nothing that purchasing ULA offers BO. They already have extremely strong old space connections and lobbying capability, which are theoretically the only things on offer that BO would have needed if they didn't have them. Sierra, on the other hand, needs rockets and old space lobbying capability. This is important as the company targets military contracts for its tenacity space plane. They stand to gain the most from this acquisition, while BO would gain nothing but buying dead weight that they planned on pricing out of business anyway. In terms of technicality, we should not underestimate ULA's technology. The 100% success rate for rocket launches is the clearest evidence for the above assertion. Can't help but mention that one of ULA's advantages is its expertise in the storage of cryogenic fuels in space. They used to develop an innovative upper stage known as ACES, Advanced Cryogenic Evolved Stage, which was intended to be reusable and powered by liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. Sierra could leverage this technology for its ambitious purposes in the future. It's safe to to say this is a win-win deal, meaning it's not just the Louisville-based company that benefits. For Boeing, the potential sale of ULA represents a strategic move under new CEO Kelly Ortberg, who took the helm in August. A deal would allow Boeing to concentrate on its core aerospace and defense businesses while reaping some cash from ULA's sale. However, there will be some challenges. In fact, 
After the sale, ULA will need a lot of investment to turn it into an operation that could really compete with SpaceX. Given that ULA is struggling to be competitive with SpaceX, acquiring them would seem to be a huge challenge for any company that has being competitive with SpaceX as a goal. As far as I know, Sierra Space has 2,200 employees to ULA's 2,700. We hope it doesn't become a scenario like Boeing, where McDonnell Douglas basically bought them with Boeing's money in all but name. Nevertheless, some people have a strong belief in Sierra Space's perseverance towards its initial mission. They suppose that Sierra Space is very competitive, management moves fast, embraces new technology, and listens to its engineers. There are tons of monetary rewards for high performance, tons of them. ULA is a boomer-run slow company. They refuse to change, and management is stubborn. They don't pay employees well, and Tory isn't pushing the company in the right direction whatsoever. If Sierra Space buys ULA, certainly ULA's upper management would be gutted. And what do you think about that opinion? Share your thoughts. Last but not least, unlike Boeing's Wall Street-style executives, ULA's chief executive, Tory Bruno, is not a dumb. Since taking over ULA in 2014, he has slashed employee headcount and taken other steps to control costs, such as closing infrequently used launch pads. He has demonstrated the ability to run a launch company with an excellent record of success and manage the development of a large new launch vehicle, the Vulcan rocket. His mission was clear, make it competitive with SpaceX. Frankly, all of the above analyses are just pure speculation because the deal between both has not come to an end. We have no idea if would Sierra be keeping the entire ULA organization mostly intact, or will they only be cherry-picking the most useful bits to them? Or even, according to the sources, the negotiations could end without a deal, and the pair of Boeing and Locked Martin will shift to the other buyers. Anyway, assuming the merger between ULA and Sierra Space happens successfully, then making a big bang threatening SpaceX's monopoly position, does it matter? The answer is no. Elon Musk loves competition, which explains why in SpaceX, patents are not so popular. As a result, China can get access to SpaceX's technologies and imitate those. He said, we don't really patent. Our primary long-term competition is China. If we published patents, it would be farcical because the Chinese would just use them as a recipe book. Anyway, a healthy economy is where fair competitions occur. It would be great to see the old farts slowly being shipwrecked and making way for the capable ones to rise up. So how about you? What do you think about this deal? Whether they can beat SpaceX in the future? Let me know in the comments. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.